Hi, welcome to the Aortic Kitchen. This is our fourth episode this season. I am Chef Rob Seltzer, the Aortic Chef. I am Mindy Seltzer, Registered Dietitian, Aortic Dietitian. Okay, so really glad that everybody joined us today uh, for this episode. We're going to uh, do something a little bit different, uh, stick with a theme. And I'm going to make several items, actually four dishes from the region of North Africa and the Middle East. Uh, lots of flavor. You know, we always talk about developing flavor. That's the big thing because we don't use any added salt and we want to make sure that things taste really well. So foods from that region are very, very flavorful. They use lots of spices uh, and herbs so that things just, you really don't need the salt to make them taste better. So we're going to do that. We have uh, four dishes today. We're going to do a uh, Lebanese, excuse me, we're going to yep. do a, a Lebanese style uh, stuffed tomato. We're going to do shakshuka North African style. Not, you know, most people, when they think of shakshuka, they think of Israeli uh, as almost the national dish of Israel these days. But it actually originated in uh, North Africa and then moved its way around the Middle East. Well, so when it got to Israel was when the um African Jews came to Israel in 1960. Right, they brought shashuka. Right. So then, but then the Israelis changed it, okay, yes. for the local palate. So well, we're going to look at some of the original types from uh, North Africa. And uh, it's got a little bit different. It really is it's the procedure's the same, basically, but it's just the, the spices, the flavorings are different and a uh, little more potent. Okay, uh, after that, we're going to do a uh, North African style uh, roasted fish, uh, which is a really nice little dish. And we'll finish off with a variation on tabbouleh. Most of you know tabbouleh is made with uh, bulgur, which is cracked wheat uh, and parsley and mint and onions and tomatoes and cucumbers. Uh, but this one we're going to make with quinoa. Uh, a couple of reasons. One, quinoa is a full protein. Uh, so for those of you that are vegetarian uh, or vegan, uh, this will be a full protein uh, available dish uh, for your day. Uh, and also though, quinoa is gluten-free, has no wheat, there's none in that dust, uh, no gluten at all in it. So for those of you that either have celiacs or gluten intolerance, it also makes a good opportunity for you to eat uh, tabbouleh, which we'll talk about a little bit. But tabbouleh, uh, Subbing the quinoa, you can actually sub any, almost any grain that's out there and still call it tabbouleh. So let me get started here uh, with the fish. So we have certain ingredients with our uh, stuffed tomatoes. And I have, we're going to stuff it with a mixture of zucchini and onions and some garlic, of course. Okay. And then cilantros, cilantro, and a little parsley and chilies, and pistachio nuts, which I've hidden away back here. Okay, some pistachio and some cilantro. That's pretty much it. And our tomatoes. So what we're going to have to do for this is you're going to hollow out tomatoes. Okay, we're going to make them hollow. So I thought I'd show you how to do one of those. I'm making three of these tonight. The recipe will be on the... Um, Turn that on to a 375, please. I can do that. So Action. the, um, where was I? Okay. So, so you're going to have all these to, out. Uh, you're going to have to let me know when you want to go to the cutting board shop. Okay. I'm going to put a little olive oil in the pan on the stove. Yeah, we're going to come over here if you want to. You can see me starting to work on that. Yeah. As well, I will get this vegetable started uh, while we uh, this. Okay, this new stove is so it's, it's fun, but We're I keep still learning. I keep getting everything backwards, so I just turned up the pan in the back and turned down the one in the front, so everything's heating improperly. Okay, <laughs> there we go. I don't want it to start smoking. So first thing we want to do with this is 
we're going to saute our onions. Yes, Mindy, you can watch that. And I got that up. It's not quite hot enough, but well, it'll get there in a minute. Just push them around for a minute, okay? No, I want this. Thank you. Okay. Okay. See, she's confused too. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> We'll get it back together with this again. All right, so the tomato, really not that hard uh, to do this. All you have to do, all you really need is your paring knife and a spoon. So we wanna cut the tomato around the top of the rim towards the outside. You don't wanna be real flat, but you don't wanna be straight down. So about a, about a 45 degree angle. That's my favorite angle in the kitchen. Everything I do is like 45 degrees. Is that because you're left-handed? No. That's because that's how we that's how we approach the cutting board. That's how we just how we do a lot of cutting and things with knife skills. Everything's 45 degrees. So because you notice I never I never cut in front of me like this. It's always 45 mm -hmm. degrees. Okay. So okay, I cut the top off the tomato. All I have to do now to me is take the bowl and take a spoon and just remove the center all the seeds we try to leave some of the meat in okay there is you know some meat in here and you come around and just pop it out Go down to the bottom and scrape it away this one's a little more difficult than the other two were Plain tough guy. There we go. Okay. As my onions are clearing, garlic? No, not yet, honey. Not yet? I want to do it. I want, I want them slightly brown. Ah. Then I'll turn up the heat. Yeah. So, okay, now we have a nice empty tomato, as you should be able to see. Did you here, use right? olive oil in here? Yes, I did. You can put some more in if you wish. Oh, I don't really need the tops for these. I just left them there. I'll get rid of those. I would compost those, but we don't compost tomatoes unless you want tomatoes growing wherever you put that new dirt. So I call like, them hitchhikers. I do compost, but okay. So while that cooks, we're almost there. You'll then add the garlic. Thank you. And the zucchini. And just go until the zucchini gets soft. Okay. And that's it. And then we're going to fill it into the tomatoes. And we're going to throw them in the oven. They take about 45 minutes. That's why I'm doing these first and getting them going. Okay. So while Mindy does that, you can move that wherever you wish. Okay. Oh, you want to start those? Whoops. Oh, yeah, we can take that out in a minute pretty soon. Good idea. So. Trying to get all this, we're gonna do this in an hour. We've got these four dishes to do. Okay. So the shakshuka, I, I'll, I'll start and get the fish ready because it's really simple. Um, and all we have to do is mix our garlic. It's a very fresh lot, lemon peel. Slice that garlic, correct? Mm -hmm. That recipe? That would slice, yes. Yeah, that I've got chopped for. Yes, it's all in the recipe. Okay. Then we're going to blend those with our olives. And we have some spices for this. And it is not open. We have cumin seed and coriander. Now, when you're using whole spices, which I use, we're using a lot tonight, uh, it's really good if you 
can, you want to bring out more flavor, you toast them. Now this particular recipe, we don't, because they'll toast in the oven because we're leaving them whole. All we're going to do actually is crush them. So we're not going to grind them up. We're just going to give them a little crush. So what I normally do is take a pot and... How about I'll give you the... If you move out of the way. I will give you the... Okay, here's a little meat cleaver. Thank you. And just smash them up. I'm doing them in the bag so that they don't go all over the all over the kitchen, right? Because they're little round seeds and they're just gonna fly. So there we go. You hear them crushing. Just rocking back and forth. I often use the bottom of a of a fry pan or a saucepan, anything flat, and just bust them up, okay? That's all done. Take those, we mix them in with the lemon peel and the garlic, okay? That's all finished. This is finished. This is not a dinner under 30 minutes. Close. And also mixed olives, okay? So all this will go together and this will go on top of our fish. Got that out of the way, but the fish only takes about 15 minutes, so I'm not gonna start that yet. Next on our list, you're getting nice. Yeah, that's nice. Got your garlic in there? I do. Okay, zucchini is going to be next. This could take a few minutes to uh, cook down. So, or the shakshuka. Now, shakshuka typically is red. This is a nice red one, a little bit on the darker side. It has two major uh, ingredients for flavor. One is roasted red peppers, uh, which I've done myself. Now, you can do them two ways. I mean, we can accomplish this two ways. This was roasted on the grill, okay? And you wanna roast it until it turns really nice and black. See how nice and black it is? And when you're done, you put it in a, a plastic bag or you can put it in a bowl. Chef, bring uh, that closer with, to the uh, with Film on top, I'm sorry. Chef, bring that closer to the other camera. This there one? There we go, yeah. There's the money shot, see? Beautiful, okay? Now you just take it to the sink. So I'm gonna to have to walk over here for a second. And you just start rinsing and washing away all the skin. You put in that bag for about five, 10 minutes, the uh, steam then allows the skin to separate uh, from the, you blist, this blistered and it all just peels right off, which I'll here show you some of that. See, it just peels right off into my hand. You just do that under the, some running water and peel, peel, peel. If you miss a little bit, it's okay. If you have a little bit of char left on the pepper, it's not a big deal. Mind if I speak? Go right ahead. If you don't want to do that, That's where I would, okay. they do make roasted red bell peppers already prepared in water. That is the easy solution to this. Yes. If you don't want to, if you don't want to, if it's not grilling season, you can do them under your broiler. You can do them with a little torch. I mean, just any way that you can, uh, if you have a gas stove, you can just put them right over the burner, uh, either on a uh, wire rack, or we just, just hold them right over the gas flame uh, in the kitchen. You know, we're a little more, we play with fire all the time in the professional kitchen, so. All right, so I've just peeled it, opened it up, all right. I'm gonna take out the seeds and the pith, that's the white stuff on the inside. Honey? Yes. Just remove. Yes, is everything soft? It is. Okay, turn it off, please. Move it to the other side. Throw in your cilantro and your, oh, we can leave the chili flakes out. I'm sorry? 
we leave the chili flakes out tonight? Yeah. Okay. And we're, we have a, one of our, our third person is not a big fan of chili flake, of anything spicy. So we'll leave it out. Um, all right. So pepper is just about ready. Take two seconds here. The whole thing's cilantro, huh? I know it's happening. No, there. save me about half of it, please. I did. Just in time. And half of the pistachios. Yeah, I know. Okay. Oh, okay. Left those here. Great. Peppers. Behind. And all you got to do with these is just what we call concasse in, in the in the French kitchen. Concasse. I don't say French. Concasse translates to rough chop. Doesn't matter what it looks like. They're all going to cook down. We don't need perfect dices. So we just chop, 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 chop. Mm. Okay, concasse. We do that with tomatoes a lot because when you cook tomatoes down, they just break down into liquid. So who cares what it looks like? Same with this. It's just a nice rough chop. And also, when it's for home or home style, you know, the chef word for that is rustic. We did it very rustic. You know, sounds very special that way. Okay, so now I have my roasted red peppers all diced up. That was two peppers total. Okay. And so my back pan should be hot. What did you turn it off? That's the front to back is on three. Okay. May I have some oil for that? You please? may. What kind? Uh, let's do the sunflower, yeah, because olive oil is going to burn in there. It's going to smoke. How much, sir? We're going to the stove. Just coat the bottom, please. Okay, great. That's about a tablespoon. Hmm. Okay. Oh, hot was. Pretty hot. Oh, oh, okay. Hot. And we'll see how it goes. All right, so again, we start, this is all sauteed, add some liquid, and it's almost done. So we're going to add first our cumin seed. See, this is made with whole cumin, and I'm going to toast these. So I'm going to throw them in the pan. Let me see how hot it is. Not quite hot enough yet. I can guarantee you that's not. I know. Yeah. I am sure it's hot. I can. I'm not, no, thank you. <laughs> you don't want the knife? I don't want to touch the pad. Oh. So when you cook with cast iron, if it's not sealed, you actually leach some iron out of the pan for your health. Okay. Good to know, though, this has been properly seasoned. If you have cast iron pans, there's, Oh my gosh, there's a million threads on how to take care of your cast iron pans. Really simple. I mean, for years and years and years, people said, no, you can't wash them. Just use them and wipe them out and put them away or you ruin it. You ruin the seasoning. Not true. You can season and season and season um, cast iron. So you cook with it. You can wash it out. Mild soap if you want. I mean, you don't need to, but you can use running water and scrape, you know, get out any bits and pieces. Now that thing's hot. I'm putting my cumin, which now you can see is really going to town here. And it's going to toast it for a second. I don't want it to burn. Okay. May I have the onions from behind me, please? So they've already browned and they're releasing all their flavor. Let's just dump those babies in. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Sure. And we're going to let these cook. So back to the cast iron skillet or pan, whichever, whatever you're using. I have a full variety. So after you wash it, you dry it really well. Typically, I put mine in the oven or back on the burner. Uh, usually a 250 degree oven is fine because, you know, steam is at 212, water boils. So if you heat the pan to 250 uh, to dry it. And if it's not well seasoned, because you don't do this every time, but a lot of people do, I do, take it out and you put some neutral oil. So I'll use the sunflower oil or I'll use 
mineral oil, and you don't need much, just a dab to, uh, ooh. That's leftover oil. Hmm? That's leftover from your seasoning. Oh. So, the, um, take the oil and just rub it around everywhere, on the sides, on the bottom of the pan. Uh, some people like to do the outside as well. Not quite as important, but a little bit so it doesn't rust. And then put it back in the oven at the 250. Let it sit there for 30 minutes to an hour. Sometimes I forget about it. doesn't matter. And uh, then take it out and let it cool. And wipe off any excess oil that may be there. And uh, you're good. Then your pan is nicely seasoned. The next time you use it, it is going to be another a nice nonstick pan. We have one over here that we use, you know, like this one. See? For eggs and you can see how shiny and bright nice it is that's when you use and you can fry an egg in there when it doesn't stick at all so those now you can stuff your tomatoes mindy okay. just fill them with that and i move change cameras those are for me i know yeah <laughs> really I thought okay. I was going to put them in your tomatoes. Oh, are you to do them over there? Oh, you're going to do them in the camera. Yeah. Wow. You're special. Thank you. Wow, stealing my limelight. No. That's I'm my aortic, limelight. I'm the aortic chef, you know. So, oh. Josh, we're on the front camera. Or the side. Or the side. And basically, you just kill them. Kill them. I did not chop the pistachios up small. I think if I did it next time, I would chop them finer so they're more integrated throughout the zucchini. And if you look, we made enough just for three. You are right. We're not going to try to overfill them. I use big tomatoes too. They're, these were Beef steaks, I had to buy those. The other uh, smaller medium tomatoes did not, Were not right. really, did not <laughs> look nice. So I didn't want to use those. And in the recipe originally, it called for like two tomatoes per person as a serving. This would be a one tomato serving. Okay. All right, these, these onions are breaking down nicely. They're nice and soft and clear now, almost okay. brown. And I'd like to have a little bit of color on them. Okay. So we filled the tomatoes. Can we bring those tomatoes closer to the side camera? I can with a pot holder. <laughs> so I don't lose my you, fingers. You put it in the oven. I put it in the oven because they were refrigerated and we didn't pull them out. Oh, well, the they oven. were, they've been out for quite a while. But anyways, there you go. Now, make some more, mound it up, um, let them fill, because there are, it's going to shrink okay. when it bakes. So now and let's put them in the oven. Should I put this on it before I bake it? No. Oh, did you do happy pistachios already? In that, here. That's yeah. for garnish when they come out. Okay. Okay. There we go. Now, back to the shakshuka. That's looking good. Our next step, I have I have a spice here. You're out of the way. And it is called Ras Al Hanout. Ras Al Hanout is a North African spice. It's a blend of spices. There are, I think, 10 different spices in here. There is turmeric, there is cinnamon, allspice, ginger, uh, cayenne pepper, clove, uh, ground clove, cumin, uh, boy. Keep going. Uh, nope, there's no pepper in it. But anyways, this is like 10 spices. I, th there are recipes out there. There are written by people from the North African region. They have as many as 20 different spices. They put star anise in it. Uh, they, they put all sorts of different types of uh, bright and uh, spices from the, you know, the equatorial regions. So uh, this will add a lot of flavor. It's really, really nice. Oh, it's got nutmeg in it, and um, I said the allspice. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put this into my onions. Cook it for a minute. Now, 
You could, I mean, you could buy all whole spices and put them in your, if you have an old, uh, what you used to be, coffee grinders, you know, the, the little brawn and uh, I have a picture of one, the white ones with the that little buzzer there. lid. That's okay. And those are actually spice grinders. We don't use those for coffee today. What we use for coffee is um, bar <laughs> grinders. Bar <laughs> grinders. All right. So just toast to that for a second. That's all it takes. I don't want to burn those um, ground up spices. Here goes our red peppers. This is now everything in the pot. Okay. So red peppers go in. The crushed tomato, that's what I'm looking for. I knew I had it. There we go. Crushed tomatoes. Now, we've talked about tomato products before. Tomato products are notoriously high in salt. Okay. Now, but I always profess, I always push and talk to you about using the simple way you can buy no salt added tomatoes out there uh, from the different manufacturers in the United States and such. And they're okay. I'm not it's a big fan. More. I've always been a fan of Italian. And Italian tomatoes are just that. They are tomatoes. They don't even bother. They don't add salt. They don't add calcium chloride. They don't add these things to their tomatoes. So this is crushed tomatoes from Italy. And if you can read this, let me see. Can we read it? It says the ingredients, tomatoes. Nothing else. There's a just, bit of a shine on it, but yeah, I can see it. Yeah, just tomatoes. Just trying to prove it, okay? Nothing else. So there's only 20 milligrams of sodium compared to some canned tomatoes. You know, there's there's 150 or more or, you know, around. Per serving. Yes, per serving. Because there's a lot of salt. Because tomatoes typically do need salt. But the Italians expect you to just do it on your own, you know? Mm -hmm. You can season it as you need it. Okay, so now we have a beautiful little stew going here, basically. A vegetable stew. Put your dinner down. Okay. And we're going to kind of let that just cook. Now I need to add the some for the <laughs> cilantro, honey. What did you do with the cilantro? Oh, here is the cilantro. Some more. Okay. And... Some brown black pepper. Again, fresh whole slices, not uh, pre-ground in the little cans from the grocery store. If they stay whole, they obviously retain more of their original flavor and intensity. Once they grind, they start releasing their essential oils and such, and you they lose their potency. And then they tell you, you should uh, not keep your spices much longer than six months if they're... Uh, uh, pre-ground and such the others the whole ones do last a lot lot longer and you just get a spice a, a grinder a pepper mill you know and you can put some things in there um or the little spice grinder as well now i have both i mean it's really convenient to have both so okay this is going to cook for a while about 15 20 minutes i need it to not bubble all over the stove but i do need it to cook in fact i can just Put the lid on it. There we go. That's called being smart. <laughs> Novel idea. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to let that go for a few minutes. Tomatoes are cooking. All right. Now, our fish. Where was that? Oh, that's right there. Is that still oh, not hot at all anymore? Great. Can I have the fish, please? Absolutely. So, this recipe for the fish, the one that I'm going to post online, has multiple methods for you to finish it. The original recipe that this was created was for a live fire. So it's just, if you ever gone camping, you ever made those hamburger surprises or things like that, where you get a little, you know, nice piece of foil and you put hamburger and potatoes and onions and whatever it is you want, and you wrap it up really good and you throw it in the fire and you let it cook. Well, same thing with this. This was made to be done in a live fire in a foil pouch. So you take a couple pieces of heavy duty foil, uh, crimp it up around the edges, put the fish in, the olive oil, the other ingredients, and then close it up 
and lay it in the coals and let it go for about 15 minutes and it'll be done. Or uh, you can do it in your oven. You can do the foil that way. I do another, I, I show another way of called uh, in papillote, uh, which is more French, uh, where you do it in parchment paper and you put the fish in there and roll it up. And I described that, but today, just for simplicity, and for those of you, is really the simplest way in papillote is uh, if you haven't done it, can be a little intimidated. Uh, just do it in casserole, okay? And we're, I'm going to do all three in one. You could do it individually in these lovely little casseroles that I have that I know Molly loves. She went out and bought some the last time she saw me do this. Uh, so, but then you still need to cover them because the point, the whole deal with this particular dish is creating the steam. So we want to uh, do that. I need to stop every second or two here. And yep, this is starting to cook really nice. Give it a stir so it doesn't burn. Okay, it smells really good that Rasa Halud, all those spices and flavors. So a little bit of olive oil in the pan. Not much. Maybe that was about a teaspoon or so. Okay. My fish. Thank you. Now, typical fish in North Africa would be sea bream, red snapper, which we have here in Florida, but I, I didn't get any. Uh, sea bass, tuna, uh, and then some other, you know, uh, I think mackerel as well, and anchovies and such, which really wouldn't be good for this. You want more of a white fish. Uh, so they, in the recipe, talk about halibut, which really is, that's North Atlantic is, you know, it's not really, uh, for this area. So, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm going with cod. I love cod. I use cod for everything. It's, uh, it's a great fish. Uh, it cooks with, uh, you know, it, it blends with everything and does real well. And it's meaty, it's thick. And it's so, mild. you know, I have three portions here. I'll just put them all. In the in the bowl. Oop, this one I gotta cut a little bit because it is too big to fit in the in there. Okay. So now a little more olive oil on top. Watch the oil. Oh, I'm, I'm watching it. It's not doing anything. It's still, okay. still in the still jar. In the jar? Yes. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Fix my hand a little bit. Now, all we do at this point is take our little blend of crushed spices and garlic and lemon peel, lemon zest. You can use a zester, you can grate your lemon, or you can uh, just peel it with a, you know, like a vegetable peeler and then chop it with a knife, it's fine. Or if you happen to have a nice uh, microplane, I love my microplane. Show them my microplane, Mindy. I can show them microplane. Yeah. I love my, my yeah, I use it for everything, for cheese and for lemons and for grating all sorts of things. This is a microplane if you haven't so, seen one before. Now. Uh, there's one side. Yeah, there's two sides. And there's two sides. And, and then this comes off and you throw it in your dishwasher. Okay. And we have a little, we have somebody making noise over there because he needs to go out. But I'm going to tell you a quick little story about microplane. <laughs> when I used to teach at Cordon Bleu, we would always do uh, equipment identification. For the new students, I taught the introductory course for many years. And so we would do, you know, they would have to be able to identify things uh, for I'm a test. I'm walking in front of the camera, excuse okay. me. Okay. I would hold them up and then they would have to identify what the different items are. So when I told them how to, how do you remember? this is a microplane and I would put it on the test. Um, you can get it in the show. I would say, okay, guys, if it's the opposite, it's not a jumbo jet, it's a microplane. Is it? Bad, oh, bad, bad, humor. bad, Kitchen bad, humor. bad, bad, Kitchen bad, humor. bad, 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 That's bad, as bad, good bad. as my tongs and thongs. Um, we're not going okay. to do and I'm not going thongs. there. And he says, I can't tell that story either. Okay, so I got my lemon and that, and now we put our, we have mixed olives here. A lot of mixed olives, actually. 
I don't know if we're going to use all of these. And that's at your discretion. You yep. like olives, you put a lot in. So these are Kalamatas and Colossals and uh, um, Manzanillas, right? Mm -hmm. There's a little mix we got at the store. Um, there's lots of them. Or just use one olive if you prefer, in case that looked like enough for you. You want more? No, I got to watch it. I mean, I'm not these are not lover. low salt, okay? This that, is the salt so this portion. This is the salt of the meal. Yeah, is this the is olives. the salt portion. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's all we have to do. Bring that over to the camera. I will, sir. Okay. Not real focused. There we go. Okay. Yep, yep. Yep. So you got the fish, the olives, all that lovely, you know, uh, spices. Put the lid on it because I'm trying to, you know, do the same thing. I'm trying to duplicate the foil packet. So I'll do that. This should take about 15. Uh, but the vessel is called the, you know, the foil is a lot quicker because it's thin. And so this will take a little longer. So I'm going to put it in because we're probably in this casserole type dish. Uh, we'll probably take another 20 minutes or so. So we'll get that going. Put it in there. Hey. Off we go. And so now the shakshuka, uh, we're getting there. But we need to let things cook for a while. So I'm going to just let that simmer on the low. Okay. This is just coming along really nice. Like we don't need this pan anymore. We're going to get rid of that. You're not putting the eggs in there? Hmm? No, the eggs are going right, right in, in there. there. Yes, honey. Ah, so smart, my dear. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's start with tabbouleh, okay? I can waste a little time here. Yep. Not waste, but we'll move on to the next thing. So we have cooked quinoa. This was one cup of raw quinoa that we've cooked. And I want you to know something. If you've never cooked quinoa, it's a seed. It's not a grain. And hopefully the camera can pick this up. If you look at it, can you make out those, how this like little snail tails coming out of the seeds? Can we yeah. see that, Josh? To me, it yeah. looks a bit like index popcorn. Finger. Yeah. It, it, yep. It, yep. Yeah. So that's how you know it's done. When those little tails start to pop out of the quinoa, you know it's cooked. You don't need to keep going anymore, even if the package tells you to. So quinoa cooks like every other grain. Cooking grains is really simple. Pretty much the ratio for water to grain is two parts water to one part grain. Okay, that's it. So one cup of rice, two cups of water. One cup of barley, two cups of water. One cup of quinoa, two cups of water. One cup of beans. One cup of bulgur, pretty much two cups. So uh, no, the beans aren't grain, so we're not talking uh -huh. beans here. but really simple and then all you do is boil the water boil your two cups or however much you're making two cups of water pour in your one cup of quinoa uh, and put a lid on it and then let it simmer for 15 minutes just like it would rice and when you take off you know look at it under the lid uh, most of the water or all the water should be absorbed and those little tails are out Mindy checked it today about 12 minutes in the little tails had popped out so she turned off the heat and just put it to the side and let it finish in the hot pan. And we looked a little bit later and it was perfect. So two to one, right? Water to grain or to quinoa seed. Now this is a nice, this is a tricolor quinoa. Most quinoa typically you'll see is white, but this is a white and a tan and a dark brown uh, that have been packaged, pre-packaged. It's really nice, it's prettier. Uh, and, and looks nice. So to make it into tabbouleh, what is tabbouleh? Tabbouleh is a Middle Eastern salad. Uh, there are actually different versions of it. Every country seems to make it a little bit different. The, we make uh, it our own way. Okay. Uh, but the you see it in Israel um, and Lebanon, Lebanon and other countries. It's very grain forward. They use a lot of the bulgur and then 
you know, just a, a smattering of the parsley. Uh, but in the more desert oriented countries like Syria, it's all about the parsley. So it's a bowl of, it's almost like a parsley salad with a handful of the grain added to it. So, which is what I love. I love fresh parsley. It's just bright and delicious. And, you know, if you could taste green, uh, that would be parsley. So we're using the quinoa and I have the, I have cherry tomatoes that we've cut in half. I have cucumbers. I hope we can mix all this in this bowl. I can. Mindy says she can. Oh, yeah, not too bad. Okay, so the tomatoes are already mixed. Cucumbers. This is one whole seedless cucumber. This is going to make a lot of tabbouleh. But we eat, we love tabbouleh. So we will eat it. I've got some eggplant in the fridge that I've already cooked, and I'm going to make baba ganoush out of it, which is really, that's really simple too. Uh, much like, remember, I made the uh, hummus a couple of weeks ago with the garbanzo beans and the tahina and the garlic. Well, that's basically the same thing for baba ganoush. It is eggplant uh, that is then mixed with tahina and garlic and olive oil uh, and seasoning. And then you have baba ganoush. It's really better, though. I like to um, smoke it. Uh, if you do it on the grill or out in the smoker, uh, the eggplant is a really great flavor. Or you can cheat if you have liquid smoke. You know, it's really actually a great product. And all it is is the water from, from they, they take charcoal, they, they burn wood. and Green they, onions. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And some parsley. We could do about, well, I need some of it for garnish later. Uh, okay. I'm going to save a little bit. A lot of parsley. You'll see that. Wow. Okay, there we go. And my dressing. My dressing is okay. lemon juice. Oh, we got mint too. Got to have mint. Got to have mint. Got to have mint. And that is, now I haven't put the olive oil in there yet. Oh, and the really? garlic. Well, we, we might leave the garlic out. I don't like garlic. Yeah. Sometimes you put garlic, but just lemon juice and olive oil. There, you can do it in here. You can mix it. Keep going. Yep. Keep going. So you call for half a cup for this recipe. <laughs> the dietitian to me, yeah. But it's we, really we don't want to dress it. So look at this. Isn't it beautiful? All the colors here. You're in my light. I am. Yes. All the colors of the rainbow. And that's Mindy's favorite. What's your favorite saying, Mindy? Eat the rainbow. Okay. So we've got all this good stuff here. Excuse me. What would you like? I'm going to mix with another spoon. Okay. So I'm not sure pour, why. So you can pour. I could have done that two-handed. You could have, but yeah. I want to be involved. Yeah, she wants to help. What do you do with a wife that always wants to help? And look, you know, I cooked for 30 years, and then he kicked me out of the kitchen. Like they say, though, happy, you know, happy wife, happy life. Is that true? I don't know. Is it? I think so. Okay, so we're going to see, is this, Maybe I haven't more seasoned lemon it, a little more, probably, we can have another lemon, now, How about yeah, lemon we juice? like it very lemony, so let me taste it in a second, we didn't season it, there's no salt in here, so we do have to make up for that. Could put a teaspoon of vinegar in it. Mm-hmm, that would, you could do that too. Okay, Mindy, you want to? Keep up with that, and I I'm will. Take a look at my shock shoot that is probably burning. Nope, it's perfect. Perfect. Josh, you want to switch over to the stove for a second? Oh, that smells so good. I wish, I wish, I wish yeah, that we had television. Melavision. When I was teaching remotely during the pandemic, and I was teaching food, um, that's what I wished for. You know. As, you know, you can show people online what to do, but, you know, some, it's, it's really important how things smell. So I just wish we had smell of vision So now what we do at this point, this is all ready. You make some wells. Take your spoon, or maybe a ladle will be better for this one. There we go. 
nice ladle. And I'm going to crack eggs into it because that's the big deal with the shakshuka. I did not. And did it is. Pepper in here? Hmm? Did you have pepper in this? No, I did not have any pepper in there. Would you like the pepper? I don't know. Let me mix it if in. If you do. So, because this is a full meal, the shakshuka is typically, you know, a brunchy, breakfasty type thing. Now, this is not really making many wells. It's not, not behaving really warm, really hot. Yeah. Yep. So that's okay. Mm. I'll need a little more. A little more. Oil. Yes. Ah, more oil. But I'll you make. notice I measured it. So we're going to drop eggs. We're going to let them poach right in the shakshuka or what they used to call shirred, like S-H-I-R-R-E-D, shirred eggs. Uh, those are things that you cook right in a hot product and it needs to be hot. And so. One of my that. favorite products is corned beef hash with shirred eggs in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the dreams, the memories. Right, don't need too much corned beef hash anymore. I wonder if you can make a beef hash. Sure, you can make hat, make turkey hash, make it mm. after Thanksgiving all the time. Nah. But so chicken you can make, hash? Yes, you make chicken hash. Okay, there's another egg. To the side there. And we go with number three. And we're gonna drop it in on this side. Okay, there we go. Cover it back up. I'm just going to turn it off because this cast iron has so much heat in it. It's all good. We have a couple of questions, Chuck. Oh, please, please. Okay. So, uh, first off, let's say hi to some people. Hi, Molly. Hi, Christina. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Velda. Hi, Antonio Reget. He says, hi, watching from Brazil. You guys are great. Fabulous. Thank great. you, Antonio. John Brenny says, what's cooking? Good looking. Melissa's first question is, where did you buy the jar of peppers? The grocery well, the store. store. Had both peppers. We bought them at Publix. In the olive uh, aisle. Yeah. You can find them. I mean, this brand is actually very good. I don't like to usually doing brands. This is Mazetta. It's a national brand, uh, and you can find them at most grocery stores, or if you have a hard time, go to an Italian specialty market. They always have roasted red peppers, either in the jar or the can. Uh, Roland makes a really great one. They do red peppers and yellow peppers in the can, packed in water. Uh, I think this, Whole Foods has it in their their olive. If the, if the stores yeah. have the olive display, they usually have the red peppers, but they might have little, little well, those are those are those are the other peppers. Not the peppers. They have the roasted red peppers. Okay, possible. Anyway, so if we're now not there on the olive aisle in the jarred and the preserved, uh, you know, with that type of anapasi stuff where your cherry peppers, like these guys, they do uh, pepperoncinis and banana peppers and roasted reds. And they do olives. They do all sorts of different products, uh, but they're all preserved. So believe that'll give you a lead on it and there's always amazon those would be way expensive okay and the next question the is from christina oh nina gave us a smiley face and a wave hi nina uh christina says if cast iron is a seasoned does it no longer leach iron no it's, it's seasoned it's it's covered in oil so the iron will go into the oil and into the food and into the food but what happens when you have the, like the blue one we're using today, um, it's sealed, so there's nothing. She's talking about the the, uh, the enameled cast iron, like La Crusade. Or uh, those, you know, the, the red and the yellow, the blue, the white that are all, those are cast iron pans that are enameled on the outs, on, you know, on the surface, uh, so they're non-stick as well. Uh, so they, uh, yeah, you don't get any benefit from the iron inside those. But just a regular cast iron pot with the oil in it, perfect. Works great. And as we're getting older, we have lots of different cast irons. We're going like, these are getting heavy. 
we have a friend that is a scoutmaster, and he loves making cake with three charcoals on the top. That's how much heat these things conduct. Yep. And if you can't, he does that. He does pies, cake. He does everything. You know, <laughs> if you're a Boy Scout, um, you know, cast iron is like your 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 what is it? Your your birthday uh, mineral yeah. or your the jewels. You know, uh -huh. you get uh, cast iron. I put that in there to crisp up. Did it? And yes, can we get a close up. up of that bowl now that it's all mixed? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make some up here in a second. Okay. Uh, let's check the fish. Boop, boop, boop. No, I need the other one. I don't know what happened to it. Oh, here it is. And I just hit the camera. Just about. Leave it off. Just leave it open. Okay. And I'm going to make a little change here. Okay. That'll be done in just a minute. So let's just play it up. So let's, any more questions or comments? So Melissa says that she cans her tomatoes uh, annually without anything. Right. Perfect. So do I. I make uh, tomato sauce, things like that. Um, if I can get fresh tomatoes, um, that's great. You know, I mean, Florida grows. I don't know if they grow more than California. You, you'd be surprised how much more things that, you know, Florida does than California and other states. You know what the number one agricultural product is in Florida? Anybody? Give you a second to type that in. That away. Anybody? We got any answers, Josh? Oh, not not just yet. Uh, Nina says, "Did you already say what degree your oven is at, and for how long you cook the fish?" Fish is typically, uh, if you're doing the foil, it's 375 for about 10 to 15 minutes. In the casserole, it's going to take a little bit longer, uh, especially uh, if you don't pre. I tried to. I had this preheated, but I know Mindy pulled it out and cooled off. And we didn't cover uh, the fish either. It'll take. I do them in those small casseroles. They take about 15 minutes, and I'll do those at 400, uh, but open, not close. So we just open this one up. Show them. Show them what the I did. Show them. Oh, okay. Yes, you're. You weren't watching. I was taking care of the dog. So. Um, We've got some yeah. answers coming in now. Okay. Uh, Nina says oranges. Christina says oranges. Nope. Nope. Not Brazil. Oranges. It's Bra oranges. Brazil now does more oranges. All our orange groves are down. But even before that, uh, for like 150 years, the number one agricultural product in uh, which you're not thinking of, you know, you're thinking of growing from the ground. When I talk of agriculture, Christina, you should uh, should know uh, cattle. We have more cattle in this state than in Texas. That probably got Christina going, but yes, we have more. But we we are basically uh, breeders. We breed we breed and raise cattle, and then we send them out to the uh, to be finished elsewhere. Uh, but we have more uh, heads of cattle than any other state in the in the union. So, and then uh, oranges aren't far behind tomatoes. We have huge tomato crops, uh, huge green pepper, cabbage, and yeah, in the winter, our winter vegetables, cabbage and such, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower. Uh, but the euro, though, you'll see a lot of them. The peppers nationally, you'll see our tomatoes nationally, especially east of the Mississippi. Uh, ours go everywhere, and our our now the newer thing, uh, blueberries. We are putting out tons of blueberries. In fact, we send our blueberries up north uh, during the season, and our strawberries too, because our season, our strawberry season, is right, is right now. We're it's ending up actually. It starts in uh, late January or early February, and then runs through to April, and then it gets too hot. And the blueberries, I think, are already done. No, uh, no, April. no, no. We're not. No, we're we're early. Blueberries are April. Blueberries are April and May. Because right now, all we see, I don't know about the rest of you, is blueberries from Peru, 
And uh, I mean, that's okay, but it's not real local. And uh, I'm sure, I mean, that seems to be a major export product for them, for them now, as well as the quinoa. Quinoa originated in Peru uh, and was a staple of the Peruvian diet. Uh, and, and then it's, you know, becoming a problem though, because they are uh, producing so, people want quinoa and they're producing so much for around the world that there's not enough quinoa uh, affordable quinoa for the people that live in Peru now. So, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a problem. You have that, um, you know, if you think about those things and, uh, you know, take into account uh, what these things are doing, you know, they're sustainable and if they're fair, uh, fair to the people that actually grow them. So I'm not sure they grow in Florida, but I might give it a try. I know I can grow wheatgrass. Yep, I'm not sure what flower. Quinoa is the seed of a flower. It's the, not a, a the grain. Seed is, right, it's, but the seed would, would be what would grow. I haven't looked it up yet, though. Yeah. I'm thinking okay. off the top of my head. So let's take a look here. Nope, nope so, not quite yet. So Christina quite. says, Texas got the most cattle, 4.4 million. And what did, did you look at Florida? Because I talked to the Cattlemen's Association. Maybe we changed. And the head of the cattle and all that. So. For the breeding, you may have the, the finished as well, but ours are, they breed, you know, they have all these ranches uh, throughout the state. And I think the original cowboys even talk about came from uh, Florida. Uh, we've had cowboys for years and years and years uh, as well. And even so. Kissimmee, which is only about 30 miles from us, has one of the largest cattle ranches. That's the one you went to. And they also have ranches in Virginia and they moved the cattle from here to Virginia. Right. And then some other places. Right. So. They are owned by the Church of the Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. Uh, they own a ton of property here in Florida and actually uh, you know, have all these uh, ranches, a major source of income for the church. What would you like, Mindy? Oh, you don't want to bake your face? No, thank you. So Christina says Florida has less than a million. Orange is Florida's number one crop. Mm, I'm going to check those, those oranges. Not anymore. Not anymore. No. Mm -mm. no. Our largest I will, agricultural yeah, I will. product in Florida is called housing. <laughs> no, I'm going to talk to my contacts at the, at the Cattlemen's, you know, the National Cattlemen's Association. You know who that is, uh, Christina. And that's where I get my info from, uh, them and the, uh, the Beef Council. And I have a, a, a contact, a good friend, who is the, uh, very high up in the council and the Cattlemen's Association. And she is the one that, that taught me that, okay? So I'll throw it on her, but I will get back to you. I'll give her a buzz and see if those numbers are still real. So I haven't talked to her for a couple years since my dissection, actually. She's uh, putting in a qualifier here for maybe per square acre. That could be true. Okay. Here we go. Shakshuka is ready. Not decided. No. Uh-huh. Here is our shakshuka. Finishing it, finishing the shakshuka uh, with some feta cheese and some fresh parsley, a little cilantro, just looking for that. Okay. I can show you Where did the all other of this just the other in my hand. Excuse me. 
Oh, am it. I in your way? Not really, but. Wow. I think the fish is ready. I think so too. Oh, let me hold it. No, yeah. I'll just give me the. I know, I'll just show them for a minute. There's our. I'm going to put it all out and I'm going to pull the camera over. Are you going to plate this or? Um, yes, we are actually. That's what I thought. Okay, so you can set it on the stove. Thank you. Good job. Christina also did the math here. She says, maybe per square uh, square acre, since Florida is 66,000 square acres, Texas is 260,000. Right. Right. Maybe it's per capita. Well, she said it's per. Yeah. Take that out of the way, and I have some more please. Okay. And all my spoons. There we go. That's fine. Thank you. Hey, looks like it's dinner time. It does. Did you want to slice some of the bread? Right now, typically when you serve chakshuka, you have to have crusty bread to dip into the lovely tomato sauce that we just made. All those great herbs and spices. This is that uh, multi-grain sourdough that I made a couple weeks ago. And I put one in the freezer just for this. Nice and crisp. You heard, did you hear Mindy cutting it? No, we didn't hear that. Okay, well here, I'll bring it over here and you can. Sure you hear that. This was the multi-grain sourdough. I've got more going again. I got it. That same sourdough is still going. I have some more um, discard that's in the fridge, uh, just fermenting. And we'll make pancakes tomorrow. Yeah, maybe pancakes, maybe more bread, maybe both. I don't know. Okay, so if I may. You may. Thank you. Uh, what are you doing? Eating. What are you doing? Don't do that. Oh. Don't do any of what you're doing. Go back to where. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm doing. That's I'm, when I close it, it shut it down for a second. So, okay. So there is our fish and our tomato. You're in the light, please. I'm in the light. Hmm. Delicious. Kabuli. And the shakshuka. shakshuka. I'm going to poke the yolk. And the yolk is still nice and, nice runny. and runny. Sauce okay. is. Oh, I got the light right. Here we go. Kabuli. Mmm. The spices are delicious. And the dish. So here we go. We have a nice, lovely. Um, like dinner. Yeah. North African dinner. North African and Middle Eastern. And dinner. Modern. Done with a little bit, uh, yes, in a modern way. So uh, we have really, this is from uh, Morocco and Lebanon and North uh, Italy. North, and, North, we know where my mind is, North Africa. North Africa, which is where Morocco is, but. We did not, this is a generalized dish. Anyways, 
I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, we are very glad to have you here tonight. Any more questions, comments, Josh? Uh, no, Christina just said goodbye. She's going to catch us on the next one. Great. And that catches I'll see her us. tomorrow, I'm sure. Yep. Tomorrow we have Aorta, Aorta Hangouts at uh, 2 o'clock. Uh, you'll see your invite in your email if you're from Aorta Cope. And uh, we're there. Everybody's welcome. It's the fun, uh, crazy times uh, meetings. Uh, we try to not think about our conditions at Aortic uh, Hangouts. But if you still need some support and you want to talk, we're there too as well. So it's open to everybody. It starts at 2 and ends when the last person logs off. We've gone as late as 8 o'clock. Uh, so it's really pretty fun. We have a good time. We tell jokes. We tell stories. We talk about almost anything. I don't Sometimes think, we come up with things. Yeah, but I don't think any topic has been taboo at this point. So uh, please join us. Uh, and then join us for, yes? Nina says, looks yummy and very different. Thank you. So if you want to join us, the next A uh, Aorta Kitchen will be the first Wednesday in April. So that's going to be... Uh, Josh got the calendar April 3rd. open. April, April yeah, 3rd? I'm supposed to do something. April 3rd. And Mindy will be doing meal prep. So she's going to talk about uh, menu planning and how you can get ahead and put together some healthful menus and then that I can you know, help prep ahead of time so you're not spending seven days a week, three times a day in the kitchen. You can get some of the work done ahead of time and have it ready to go. Um, or at least shorten your time in the kitchen yeah. by advanced prepping. With the meals that we've prepared, having that tomato sauce already made. Right. In, in the refrigerator, then or, you can. Yep, or the freezer. Or the freezer, then you can just throw it in and then put the egg in, cook it, put the egg in and the cheese. The fish, you can take it and portion it. Because we have three pieces. If there was only two of us, we'd take the last one and put it away before we sit down to the table. Because then we'll have lunch tomorrow. Right. And the, really, the, you know, you can, any type of grain or beans, you can always cook ahead. Uh, I know some, I talked to some of the people, chefs, uh, that, you know, always have, like, some sort of cooked bean around uh, in their refrigerator so that they can do anything with it, whether it's make a soup or a stew or a salad uh, or just cooked beans, uh, which I know Tim tries it, Tim, uh, one of our members, uh, eats beans every day. Uh, which is great because it's a great source of fiber and vitamins and minerals. So we like beans. They are really, really good for us. And Josh, so, before we end the show, is there another program tonight? Not tonight. Okay. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So <laughs> There's tonight's live broadcast and their monthly mindfulness meeting is happening. And for those of you that signed up for the mindfulness course, that will be kicked off tomorrow. Everybody will start to see those emails coming in. Great. Okay. Fantastic. Fabulous. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for being here again. And I just want to say uh, stay healthy and eat well. And uh, be well. We want, and be well. I want to say goodbye from the aortic kitchen. <laughs>